Has he been your miracle worker? Has he been your promise keeper? See, there's folks that don't understand your praise. It's because they don't know your story. If they knew your story, they would understand your praise. If you got a reason to praise him, praise him right now. Thank the Lord. Great job, everybody. If you're ready for the word, shout, I'm ready. Stand for the reading of God's word. I'm ready for you today. Now, now, folks, I've got some really good news for you. I believe that God wants you blessed. Okay, I got, I got about 20% of you there. I said, I believe that my God wants you blessed. Uh, if he didn't desire for you to be blessed, why in the world would he have saved you? Why would he have delivered you? Why would he have set you free? He didn't bring you out of what he brought you out of for you to be messed up. Is there anybody that might actually believe that God wants you blessed today? I started a new series last week called Blessings or Blessed, and I want to take some time and just minister to you today and just convince you that the Lord is on your side. The good news is the bad news was wrong. Hallelujah. God is for you. He's not against you. I want you to look in your Bibles to Malachi chapter 3, and then we're going to read John 10.10. 10. Malachi 3.8 says, Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? But you say, In what way have we robbed you? And the Bible said, In tithe and offerings, you are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. This is your storehouse. Come on now. You don't give your tithe to Benny. We love Benny. Let me tell you, if you get sick, Benny ain't coming. But Jimmy might show up. Can I get a witness? This is the storehouse. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now. This is the only place the Lord says, test me or prove me or try me. Try me in this. And says the Lord of hosts, see if I will not open up for you the windows of heaven. Ooh. And pour out on you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Man, that sounds good to me. Then John 10.10, 10, this came from the very lips of Jesus, the thief, the devil, the dog. He comes but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, it's not over. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. How many of you want abundant life in Jesus' name? I'm going to preach to you for a few minutes along these lines. The devil wants me cursed, but God wants me blessed. How many of you believe that God wants you blessed today? Come on, make a little noise if you believe God wants you blessed. Slip up your hands, precious. What a great looking crowd. I believe God's going to speak to us today. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you're a mighty God. Thank you that you're a God who is for us, not against us. You're on our side. We give you praise. God, we can't thank you enough for how good you've been to us. And I pray today that, that, that your word will go forth in power, that it will help somebody. Show us how, how the devil wants us cursed, but God, you're a, you're a much better blesser than the devil is a curser. Hallelujah. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord the ovation of the morning. Come on. You can be seated. I want to tell you today that I believe that God wants you blessed. I believe that God wants to prosper you. I believe that the Lord is on your side. The devil is about your trouble, but God is about your triumph. The devil is about your breakdown, but God is about your breakthrough. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that God could actually prosper you? Now, the word prosper, now it means this. It means to be successfully victorious over your issues. Now, I know you don't have any issues, but your neighbor is running over with issues. Come on. To be successfully victorious over your issues, to be blessed in your life and in your business. Now, let me ask you this. 
Do you want to be successfully victorious over your issues? And are you claiming that you're going to be blessed in your life and in your business? If that's you, make a little noise in the house. Now, now I want to give you some revelation today. I'm ready for you. I'm excited about teaching. Listen, I've been preaching all weekend long. We just finished Collide and had hundreds of pastors in here, and we poured into them. And I've been teaching and preaching all weekend long, but I got just enough for you. Hallelujah. I got just enough to preach this for you. And I believe God's going to say some significant things today. But I want to give you some revelation concerning the fact that the devil wants you cursed, but God wants you blessed. And the question is, why does God want me blessed and why does the devil want me cursed? Why is the devil so bent on seeing me cursed? Now, let me explain something to you. I don't believe I have the power to curse you and I wouldn't curse you if I could. I don't even believe that God curses you. I believe that all the way back in the garden when man fell, man fell out of connection to God. He fell into a situation where he found himself cursed. He found himself separated from God. And it was through Jesus that we are restored by his precious blood. But we've been living in a curse, in a financial curse, in the curse of sin and many other curses. And I'm telling you what your giving does, your giving lifts you out of that curse. It breaks that curse off of you. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to live cursed. I want to live blessed. Now you say, well, pastor, why does the devil want me uh, cursed? Number one, the devil wants you cursed because he hates God and he hates you. I, the devil can't stand you. He don't like you at all. The Bible said in John 10.10 10, that the thief, the devil, comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. One of the chief reasons the enemy wants you cursed is because he don't like you. He don't like you. He doesn't like anything about you. He don't like your hair. He don't like your weave. He don't like your shoes. He don't like anything about you. He can't stand you. He, he doesn't want you to give and sow and be faithful to God because he knows that your giving breaks the curse off your life and he doesn't want you blessed he wants you cursed and there are three elements three things you got to understand in the pro process of prosperity that the devil hates number one he hates the blesser the devil despises God. He hates God with everything that he has within him. Number two, he hates the blessing. He hates your breakthrough. He hates your miracle. He hates the things that God does for you. But number three, he hates the blessed. He hates you. The devil despises you. He hates everything about you. Understand, you cannot sign a non-aggression pact with the devil. You can't sign a non-aggression pact with hell. The devil hates you. Your misery is his policy. He's all about your depression. He's all about your fear. He's all about your sickness. He's all about you living a life that is full of sadness and sorrow. But the Bible said that the Lord will turn your mourning into dancing and your sorrow into joy. Hallelujah. The devil despises you, everything about you, but you serve a God who is faithful. And when you are faithful to God in ways of giving, I believe God God will be faithful to you. The devil hates the blesser. The devil hates the blessing. And, and the devil hates the blessed. But hear me in this room. You, you can't tell nobody else to go to hell. You may think it, but you can't say it. Come on now. You need to repent even if you're thinking it. Come on, somebody. But the truth is, you got the right to tell that ugly, dirty mouth, dump truck headed, no good, toe jam, limping, half stepping devil. Y'all don't make me preach country up in here. You can tell that devil, go to hell. Leave my family alone. Leave my children alone. Leave my money alone. How many of you are ready to put the devil in his place and let God no, Lord, I'm going to love you. Hear me in this room. The devil comes but for to steal. Somebody say steal. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Let's look at the word steal. Now we're going, we're going to learn today. The word steal is the Greek word klepto. It's where we get our English word kleptomaniac. It literally means an obsessive desire to steal. Watch this. Especially 
without economic motive. The devil doesn't want to steal your money because he's broke. The devil doesn't want to steal your money because he needs money. The devil doesn't need your money. He has no financial motive. He steals from you because he hates you. He don't want your Corolla. He doesn't want your Hyundai. He's not worried about your Volkswagen. He's not worried about your Ford truck. Come on, somebody. Do you think hell is having financial problems? No. Hell has no financial motive at all. And so when you're unfaithful to God, you put the enemy in a position to be able to enforce the curse in your life. You empower the enemy to rob you blind. And But when you make up in your mind that you're going to put God first, you will find out that God will then reverse the curse and enforce his blessings over your life. Hallelujah. I want to tell you the devil is a good curser, but God is a great blesser. Somebody give God a praise if you believe that he's a better blesser than the devil is a curser. Number two, the devil wants you cursed because he wants the church to be poor and insignificant and ineffective. The devil wants you to look broke. He wants you to barely survive. But that's not the plan of God for the church. Ephesians 5.27 said that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such things, but that she should be holy and without blemish. And one of the greatest fears that the devil has is when the church starts getting blessed. If you should Show me a blessed church, I'll show you blessed church folk. I was wondering, are there any blessed folk in the house today? Oh, that's pretty good. I said, are there any blessed people in the house today? Come on, y'all. Blessed people are noisy people. I said, is there anybody here today? You come further than you ought to come. God's been better to you than you deserve. I've had his faithfulness manifest in my life. Make a little noise if God has been good to you. See, see, God wants a blessed church. The enemy wants people in the church to be poor and insignificant, unable to touch anybody, unable to reach anybody, because as long as he keeps the church in poverty, he hampers our ability to be effective. He wants you to just be barely surviving. He wants the church to be the roughest, baddest looking place in town. He wants it to be broke down. He wants it to be the joke of the community. And you say, well, Pastor Rayleigh, Pastor Rayleigh, he, why does the, why does the devil want me cursed. He wants you cursed because he knows that people who trust God will do the right thing with their money and they'll bring it to the storehouse and they'll tithe and they'll give and when they give God can bless them. See, let's face it, y'all. It costs to spread the gospel. We had Pastor Rayleigh back in the old days. Let me tell you something, baby. This ain't the old days. I said, it, this ain't the old days. Wouldn't it be great if they, just, you, you, if they just sent me a note and said, Pastor Rayleigh, here's your electric bill, but you know you guys have brought in the homeless. You've helped people this month. We know you've supported missionaries. Don't even worry about paying this electric bill. We don't even worry about paying your mortgage. Pastor Troy would shout, run around the building, fall out in the Holy Ghost, catch himself and cover his own legs up. Come on, somebody. If, but that don't happen. We have light bills. We're on television. We have insurance bills. We support missionaries around the world. We have internet and the devil does not want you blessed because grateful, thankful people put God first with their money. But see, he wants the church to be the joke of the community. He wants the church to be broke down. He wants the grass to be grown up. He wants everything to look terrible. How many of you are glad that you come to a church where it's clean and it's nice and it's first class. You know why? Because whatever you do for the Lord, you ought to do it with everything you got. There shouldn't be a building that looks better than the house of the Lord. There shouldn't be anything in town that looks better than God's house because God is glorified in this place. Hallelujah. If you believe that, give the Lord a shout. Now, the devil doesn't want you to give because he knows that when you do, you're going to be blessed. John 10.10 10 says this. Here's what the devil does. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Kill means to slay. 
in, in the Greek, destroy means to ruin and render useless, non-effective. And the enemy wants the church to be dead and useless on planet earth. The devil wants church folk to be cursed because he wants to desire, desires you to be rendered useless and ineffective. But Jesus said, the thief comes for to kill, steal, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I want you to understand something. In the original translation, it reads, the thief comes for to steal, but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. But in the original translation, there's a conjunction there. But, come on somebody. But I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. What is the word but? The word but is a conjunction. Come on, I learned about conjunction from Schoolhouse Rock. Conjunction, junction. Oh, y'all, everybody in here ain't nine years old. I'm just a bill up on Capitol Hill. Where are y'all at? Who knows about Schoolhouse Rock? Now, now conjunction, junction, a uh, conjunction is the word but. That's what but is. It's a conjunction. It lets you know that the sentence is not over. It lets you know that there is more to come. The thief comes back but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But, <laughs> uh, that's a big but right there. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Let me tell you, God has put some big buts in some of y'all's life. Preach Pastor Rayleigh. I said, God has put some big butts in some of y'all's lives. <laughs> God has put some big butts in some of y'all's lives and you cannot lie. Come on, sir. Where are the real folk? I said, you got some big butts in your life and you cannot lie. You ought not be here, but Jesus saved you and he set you free. You shouldn't even have the job you got right now, but God opened the door and made a way right out of no way. You shouldn't have the house you live in right now, but God gave it to you. I dare somebody to give God a praise if you understand where I'm coming from. Huh. Take that devil. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Somebody say abundantly. The word abundantly in the Greek, I love it because it means, it means superior. It means extraordinary. It means surpassing and uncommon. Who in the world wants a life like that? My, my, my giving opens up the abundant life and the devil wants me cursed. But the third reason I want you to understand why is the devil wants me cursed because he wants all money used for evil pursuits. The Bible said in Luke 16, 13, watch this, no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot I said you cannot serve God and mammon now let me make it let me break it down and make it cl clear today there are two kinds of money there are blessed money and there is cursed money you say pastor what about them rich heathens what about my brother-in-law that don't give nothing to the Lord, but he rolling deep? You ever thought about that? Well, what, what, what about that? What does the devil think about that? Let me tell you. You may be sitting here thinking, what about the people who don't honor God and they seem blessed, but they live like hell? Here's the deal, y'all. They serve their money. The word mammon, if you define it and transliterate it from the Greek, it means wealth and riches. And the Bible says here that they, no servant can serve two masters, for either they will hate the one and love the other, or else they will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The word serve there means to be in bondage to. It means to make a God out of. How many people have made a God out of what they have? They've made a God out of their money and they think that their money and their resources is their greatest asset. But if it stands between you and the Lord, your money becomes your greatest liability. 
See, the devil doesn't mind seeing people blessed if he knows that that money will become a curse because they will begin to worship that money. I never want to get to a place where I love the blessing more than I love the one who gave it to me. Oh, let me talk to you. There's a seduction in success. I said there's a seduction in success. I've watched people sit in church, and as long as they didn't have anything, a pot or a window, as long as they didn't have any money, as long as they were struggling, they were willing to give what little they had. They were willing to worship recklessly. They were ready to praise God until they sweated, until their makeup was running off. They were willing to give God all the glory. They were willing to remember him. But the moment they got a little bit, bit blessed. Then they got too deep to give him glory. They got too good to give him praise. And then they got afraid. I can't give like that to the Lord. See, that's when you put your money above the Lord and that's when your money becomes mammon. But when you understand, I wouldn't even be here today without the goodness of God in my life. And what your blessing does is open up the opportunity for you to give God praise and say, look what the Lord has done. Oh, hear me in this room. I want to see you blessed today. But I want you to write this down because this is powerful. Money that is submitted to God is blessed money. And blessed money multiplies. My God, I'm preaching better than you're letting on. I said blessed money multiplies. Pastor Troy, bless money is the money that goes further. Bless money is the money that God seems to, I was trying to preach today uh, and I finished up and people started coming back to me in the back one after the other and they were talking about how their money was blessed because they had been giving to God. I had a lady who came back there and said, you know what, I don't make a lot of money but I started giving to God and she said, Pastor, as I have given to God, every need I have now is supplied my home, my food. She said everything. Did she not say it, babe? She said, I have been so blessed. You know why? Because blessed money multiplies. She said, everybody told me I'm too poor to give. She said, but I started honoring God and she said, now I am so blessed. One lady came back to me, a single mom. She said, Pastor, I've been living this that you've been teaching. I, I claimed it in the name of Jesus. I started coming into your church a few years back. She said, I was driving a raggedy old car she said the roof was all coming off of it, rusted out. We were sweating, trying to get the church in our church clothes. She said we had a messed up, nowhere to live. She said I started applying the principles that you were teaching. She said I drive around now in a brand new car. My kids watch the DVD. I live in a new house. She said I'm trying to tell you, Pastor, that when you tithe, God honors it. When you give, God honors it. God ain't going to lie to you, baby. The Lord is on your side. I dare you to give God praise if you believe that he is a blesser. I'm not saying he's a sugar daddy. I'm saying he's a blesser. I'm saying he is a blesser who honors those who honor him, who remember those who remember him. Hallelujah. I, I, won't, I won't bless money. I said I won't bless money. I said I won't bless money. Well, some of y'all say, well, Pastor Rayleigh, if you knew the Bible, you would know that money is the root of all evil. And if you knew the Bible, you would know that money does not have a personality. This step cannot be evil. A $20 bill cannot be evil. Money is not evil. You can, you can take $20 and feed your family or $20 and go buy crack. Money ain't evil, but the love of money. Y'all don't make me preach. When you start loving the money, when you start loving the stuff, when you start loving what you got more than you love who gave it to you, then it becomes evil. But am I in a church today that will say every blessing you pour out in my life, God, let me turn that thing to praise and let me remember you. One, two, three. Give God a shout if that's you. Now, 
The fourth reason the devil wants you cursed is he wants to enforce the curse of shortage, lack, and poverty. The Bible says here you are cursed with a curse. Now listen, you are cursed with a curse. The devil wants to enforce that curse and of poverty over your life. And when you don't remember God and when you don't put him first and you don't bring your offerings to the Lord, you enable that devil to enforce that curse of shortage and lack and poverty. And I want you to understand something. The devil is really good at enforcing that curse. There's no question about it. He's had a lot of practice. And I'm going to tell you, the devil is really a great curser. But God is an unbelievable blesser. And the devil can't curse you beyond what God can bless you. Oh, Jesus. The devil can't hate you more than God loves you. The devil can't hinder you more than God can free you. The devil can't pull more strength away from you more than God can empower you. I'm trying to tell you today, God is an unbelievable blesser. God is better at blessing than the devil is at cursing. And when you honor God, you enable him to fulfill his word in your life and you open up heaven. The Bible says, watch this now, in 2 Corinthians 9. You ready for this? The Bible says that God is able. Make a little noise if you believe God is able. God is able to make some grace abound toward you. That's not what it said. No, God is able to make how much? All grace abound toward you that you once in a while, once in a while, once in a while, Always having some sufficiency. No, that, no, no. I must be reading the Amplified Bible. Come on. If it sounds loud, it's Amplified. Come on, somebody. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. How does that sound? All grace, always having sufficiency in all things that you can abound to every good work. The Bible said he provides seed to the sower in 2 Corinthians 9, just right around those verses. And he said, as you sow, he is able to make all grace, bring that text up again, all grace, all grace, all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency, my God, my God, my God, all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. That means that God wants to put you in a position where you can be blessed enough that when there's a need you can meet it. When somebody needs help, you can help them. How many of you want to have all grace? Come on. Always having all sufficiency in all things that you may abound to every good work. Give God a praise if that's you. Now what does the word abound mean? I'm so glad you asked. Abound means to superabound, To be in abundance. To have more than enough. So I want you to get radical with me. Come on. Get radical with me. Come on, shake, shake your shoulders up a little bit and get radical with me. Put your hand on your chest and say, in Jesus' name. Come on, shout it out. Say, in Jesus' name. As I put God first, I will abound. I will superabound. I will walk in abundance. And I will have more than enough. If you believe that, give God a shout. The fifth reason God, the, the devil wants you cursed is to prove that God's word doesn't work. The devil wants the church broke and busted and disgusted and wants you not to be blessed because he wants people to look at you and think that God's word doesn't work. He wants people outside the kingdom to think that the word doesn't work. But let me tell you something, devil, it's too late. I know that the word works. Is there anybody here today you know that the word works? I said, do you know that the word works? Devil, it's too late. You can't change my mind. I know that the word works. It's too late. You should have got to me a long time ago, but I know that the word works. Honey, we've been living this too long. We know that the word works. We know that the Bible works. 
we know that the scripture works. We know that the principles of God works. I dare you to touch three people and say the word works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when your husband don't work, the word works. Even when you can't get him out of the house, the word works. I come to let you know healing works. Deliverance works. Salvation works. Household salvation works. Anointing works. Peace works. The blood works. The cross works. Power works. The Holy Ghost works. If you believe the word works, one, two, three, give God a shout. Get your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, you can just sit there if you want to, but I got to give God praise because I am a living witness. The word works. 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 Huh. Push your neighbors and tell them to say, I said the word works. The word works. If it didn't work, I wouldn't be here today. If it didn't work, I would have gave up a long time ago. If it wouldn't have worked, I would have thrown in the towel. But I'm here today to testify and say that the word works. Shatakaba Sunday. The Bible says, Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word. The word works. Then the Bible said in Psalms 35, you ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? The Bible said, let them shout for joy. Let them shout for joy. If the word has worked in your life, I dare you to shout for joy right now. Oh, my, 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 my. Listen, I need to teach this, but I feel a crazy praise right up in here. I feel like some of y'all need to shout for joy. The devil thought he had you, but the word worked. The devil thought he'd have your children, but the word worked. The devil thought he would bring you down, but the word worked. I dare you right now, let them shout for joy. If the word has worked for you, Push your neighbor and say, I'm working the word. Every time I give, I'm working the word. Every time I sow, I'm working the word. Every time I clap my hands, I'm working the word. Every time I dance, I'm working the word. Every time I shout, I'm working the word. Every time I pray, I'm working the word. And I'm working the word, cause the word works. Shout somebody. Let them shout for joy and let them be glad. Uh, let them shout for joy and let them be glad who favor my righteous cause. And let them say once in a while. Let them say only on Sunday. Let them say in only in second service. No, he said, let them say continually. Let the Lord be magnified. Let the Lord, I'm about to throw my shoe. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God ain't tripping when you get blessed. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. That's why you ought to shout for joy. That's why you ought to be glad because the devil may want you cursed, but God wants you blessed. One, two, three, give the Lord a shout of praise. Is there anybody here who favors his righteous cause? Now, uh, 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 it's too late, devil. I know the word works. I know too much about him to doubt him. You're too saved to be swayed. I said you're too saved to be swayed. You're too anointed to be disappointed. You're too blessed to be stressed. 
because you know the word works. You may get in the valley once in a while and you may go through trouble once in a while, but you know at the end of the day that the Lord is on my side. David said, had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, when men came in, they would have swallowed me up quickly. But my soul escaped just like a bird out of the snare of the fowler. Oh, the word works. The word works. The word works. The Bible said he takes pleasure. Pleasure, 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 pleasure in the prosperity of his children. Hear me now. Pleasure means he's pleased with it. He's delighted with it. He's cool with it. I grew up, when I was coming up in church, the more broke you were, the more spiritual you were. So me and my family, we were spiritual. I was like the most spiritual kid in my class. And then when the pastor got up, he was afraid to talk about money, giving, play son. But y'all know me, I'm 54. I ain't scared of y'all. I ain't, I ain't scared of y'all. Because the truth is, anybody who really knows me, and here's what I found out, you know, is God has given me platforms and things. Lots of times, the people who know you the least will talk about you the most. And if you can't take being talked about, you ain't ready to be blessed. Amen, Pastor Rayleigh. I can stand up here and teach this with a pure heart. I would never manipulate people. God's been too good to me. My, my salary is not set by me, never has been. Anytime I stand up to teach on this, I can teach on it with a pure heart. Because my salary doesn't change. No matter how great the offerings are, it, it doesn't change. If the, if, the, if the offerings got light, my salary might change, but that's not going to happen in the name of Jesus. So I can stand before you today. And I can tell you these are principles that I don't just preach. These are principles that I live. And I'm going to tell you that I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to write books. I'm going to travel. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach right here. And I'm going to be blessed. I told y'all that 10 years ago. I told y'all that 15 years ago. I told some of y'all that were here when I got here. And we came and took such a pay cut you know, we were on the road and had more than enough. Then we came here, and overnight, we had nothing. But I told you, I told those people, I'm going to be blessed. God's going to look after me. I believed it then. And some of y'all right now, I'm going to tell you, if you don't like where I am now, you're going to really be mad at me in 10 years. Because by the time I'm, I'm 64, I'm going to have Mo, and God's going to take care of me. You know why? Because I've honored him. I've preached his word. Get mad at me if you want to. I haven't compromised altar calls. I've, I've sought the Holy Ghost. I'm not a perfect man. But we've given and we've been faithful. And I believe I have the right to say, now God, I did what you said. So I'm claiming your promises in my life. It's a trip to me. People get mad because I preach about something they don't like. You know, Pastor, you just preaching on sin. You preached it a little bit too hard. I ain't like that. I ain't gonna, I ain't, I'm gonna stop giving. Because I messed up Pookie and them living like the devil. You don't want to hear that Pookie needs Jesus. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Messing up your family. I mean, you shouldn't have said nothing. You don't know, man. Junior and them, they, they all struggle. We got all kind of people. We got Junior. We got Pookie. Come on. We got them all at Calvary. I'm going to quit giving. I don't, like, I don't like what you're teaching. I'm going to quit giving. And you think you're messing me up because you give. You ain't messing me up. I ate before you ever gave. I'll be eating when you quit giving. You know why? Because you're not my source. 
When, when will we learn that people are not our source? God is our source. But see, we've got to learn how to, we've got to learn how to prosper righteously. Because if your prosperity makes you want to live like a rock star and act like you better than anybody else, then that, you're not prospering righteously. I believe that God proper, prospers you righteously. And there are three ways that you will be blessed if you're faithful. There, there are three ways to receive your blessing. You can receive it in pride. You can receive it in poverty. Or you can receive it in gratitude. When you're blessed, do you receive your spirit, your, your blessing in the spirit of pride? Pride said, I deserve more. That's that a little pitiful blessing. I deserve so much more than that. Do you, do you receive it in poverty and say, you know what, I need to feel guilty about it. I shouldn't even be blessed. Or do you receive it in gratitude and just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for my blessing. When, when somebody says to you, wow, you have a nice house, pride says, you know, we were going to build a bigger one. We just decided not to at the last minute. We were going to build a bigger one. Poverty said, it was a foreclosure. The payments are real low. I just barely got in. I only got in because my wife got a raise at Chick-fil-A. That's the only reason I got in because my, 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 my husband's real estate business took off. I only got in. No, I, it was a foreclosure. But gratitude says, thank you, Lord. You bless me. I give you praise. When somebody says to you, that's a nice suit, pride says, pride says you know, it's tailor-made. <laughs> Poverty said, I bought, it, I bought it on the clearance rack. It was half off. It was 30% off. I, I, listen, I, did, I, 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 I just barely got it. I, I just had the extra money. I, I, I sold some cans and I was able to get it. Does it look all right? Poverty says, thank you. I mean, gratitude says, thank you. Ain't God good? When somebody says, that's a nice car, pride says, I've got three of them. Poverty says, it's a company car. <laughs> Gratitude says, thank you. Thank you, God. Lord, you're faithful. Pride says, I earned it. Poverty says, I don't deserve it. Gratitude says, I only receive my blessings because God is good. Who can say, Pastor, I'm right there with you. I've only received my blessings because God is good. Wave at me if you can say, I only receive my blessings because God is good. I'm telling you, I'll pray, I'll pray you won't be blessed if you're going to get full of pride and lose out with God. You hear me? But if you'll let your blessings make you more grateful, make you remember the Lord, Pastor Troy, because the Bible said, and you shall remember the Lord your God in Deuteronomy 8, 18, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. He said he gives you power to get wealth. He gives you the ingenuity. He gives you the job. He gives you the skill. He gives you the ability. But if it's only about you, if your blessings are only about you, then you don't understand the kingdom. It is he who gives you the power. Bring that up there, son. It is he who gives you the power to get wealth. Watch this. That he may establish his covenant. What is his covenant? It's the gospel. I'm going to give for the gospel's sake. You know why we have this building? You know why we open these doors? We're not a club. We're a hospital. We're a place for the gospel to be preached. And the covenant nowadays is his gospel. Some of you are in a place right now. And you say, it seems like I've been walking under a curse. Well, the devil wants you cursed. But God wants you blessed. Here's my challenge. I have no motive. I have no agenda. If you didn't like this message... My email address is josh at calvaryfl.com. They say you look like me anyway, you good-looking thing. You know what I found out? The people that get mad at me when I preach on giving, which I haven't preached on it in like two or three years. All he ever talks about is money. A lot of, a lot of parents on fire. I talk about everything. 
I talk about your bedroom. I talk about your mother-in-law. I talk about all y'all. Come on. But I found out the only people that really get mad at me when I preach on giving, they ain't giving anyway. I said, the only people get me. She said, say it again. I like you. I'm going to tell you. We need to move her up. Put her on the second row. The only people that get mad about giving that ever email me about giving, that's an Old Testament principle. Why are you trying to preach tithing up in there? Why are you doing that, Pastor? They ain't giving anyway. They stingy. Stingy people don't want to give to God, but blessed people know he's the source. Let me, let me remember him. Is there something in your life unreleased because you haven't given to God? I'm just asking you. Are there blessings that you haven't walked in? It's amazing to me how we, we, we will trust God with everything, but we won't trust him with our money, with our giving, with our 10%, with our tithe. And God is so big that he made it all the same, that we all give the tithe, the tenth. He made it the same. So today, this is your opportunity to put God first. This is your chance. Now, I, I want to see you blessed. I love you. I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of person that, man, if I had it with my power just to bless everybody in this room and I can speak it over you, but if I had the tangible resources to do it, I'm not, that's the way I'm wired. But the truth is, God is not going to miss the opportunity to be your provider. And he wants you to remember him and he will honor you. Now, I'm about to receive this offering. I want everybody, we're, we're receiving it different during this time that I'm teaching on giving. How many of you feel like you learned something today? Make a little noise. How many of you want to be grateful? Make some noise if you want to be grateful. Okay, I want you... If it's not your day to give, if you gave last week or you tithe at a different time or you, you, you have your money deducted out of your uh, account or you do automatic draft, however you do it, I just want you to pass your hands over the bucket that's going to be in front of you. And I want everybody to make an effort. If you say, well, pastor, I can't even give. I'm not even in position to give. I want you to move in faith and say, God, I'm going to put my hand over this bucket today and this is me telling you that right now I don't have any money but Lord I'm going to start putting the principles of your word to work and the next time I have resources I'm going to tithe on it I want some of you that there's some there, there may be somebody watching me right now and you've had an increase in your life just a great increase and and you've been holding on to that that money knowing that you need to tithe considerable on it God can't really bless you the way he wants to bless you and that money won't be sustained and multiplied unless you tithe on what he brought to you. Never get to a place where you can't tithe on what God gives you because when you tithe and you give on what he's given you, it opens up the next season of blessings for your life. So I want everybody to stand to your feet right now. You can give on your phones. You can give 386-866-3060. You can give on your credit cards. I want the ushers to come and stand right here and stand in the front. Now, one of the things we're going to do, nobody leave just because we're going to close this out. I'm going to speak a blessing over you. Pastor Troy, come up here. How many of y'all love Pastor Troy? You love him? Don't he look good? He got on his new coat. He got on his new shoes. He's matching. My Lord, he looks so sharp. I stand next to him. I'm about to get cut. Come on. He's been my, my closest friend for way over three decades. And he has been uh, really the financial gift to God as far as what he is able to know and the way that he's able to help us. He's a gift to God to this church. He oversees our budget. Let me tell you something about Calvary. Look at me in the eyes. Look at me. We ain't broke. We got money in the bank. Our bills are paid. Our missionaries are supported. We're going to ready to do an expansion. We already got money in the bank getting ready to get it done. And we're going to raise money. This is a blessed house. We got more people coming than we've ever had. Is that a fact? Yes. We have our greatest crowds we've ever had. We have more people, more resources. You ain't in a jacked up house. You in a blessed house in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Pastor Troy, tell them about what you're going to do and what you're going to offer. All right. But what, I, you know, what he preaches is, is the word of God. You know, I live it myself. I believe that's why I'm blessed, my wife and I. But what we want to do beyond, I mean, it's great to teach the Word of God. Everything he said is Word of God.
today because you got to apply it into your life. But we want to take it one step further because there may be some of you that says, you know, I just need some help to learn how to do stuff. This coming Sunday, not tonight, but next Sunday night at 6.30, where we are sponsoring an event, not, not a dime charge to you, sponsoring an event. It's going to be a financial literacy event. And we're going to have a guest speaker that's coming to come in. He travels. That's all he does. He does no other job but to travel and teach people, you know, about how to handle your money, how to get rid of your debt, how to actually save money, how to invest money, how to get money for your kids' college put away. All these things he's going to talk about. And in addition to that, he's bringing his team with him. His team is coming for this sole purpose. After he finishes speaking, they're going to line up. And if you have an individual question you've been wanting to ask somebody, they're going to be there because you may not want to ask that in front of a lot of people because I hope a lot of you show up. They may not want to do that, but you can ask them individually and they will help you. All I ask you to do, again, there's no cost. I ask you to do one thing for me. Go online to our website, calvaryfl.com, right on the front page. It's the financial literacy event or on your app, on your phone, on the Calvary app and go in and sign up. Here's why. Because if we believe a lot of people are coming out tomorrow, I mean, next Sunday night, and we want to have enough material to hand you and give you. And we're gauging the material by how many people sign up. So if you could do that for me today or this week, sign up so we can make sure we have enough for everybody. We'd really appreciate it. Amen. And listen, he's going to talk to you about retirement, how to, how to get you resources into your retirement. How many of you want to, you maybe want to send your kids to college? things like that. Pastor Troy is going to give you the strategy to do that. How to come out of debt. Amen. We want to see you do that. So you can be a part of that. It's going to cost you nothing. We're going to do it for you. Now I want you to take those offerings. If you want to give on your phone, however you're going to give. If you've already given, hold up your hands. I want to, I want to speak the blessing of the Lord over you. I think everybody should sow a seed if you can. A tithe or an offering. And I'm going to speak this blessing over your life. In the name of Jesus, I declare that as you bring the tithe and offerings into the house of the Lord, that he opens up the windows of heaven over your life. I declare that the devourer is rebuked off of you, rebuked off of your family, rebuked off of your children, and rebuked off of your finances. I declare in faith that the Lord opens up blessings for you that money can't even buy. I declare that the grace of God abounds that your lost children come in in a mighty way to the kingdom. I declare that the peace of God overwhelms your life. I declare that every demonic scheme of the enemy is bound up. I call in checks and, and, and in the, and to come into your mailbox right out of nowhere. I call in financial favor. I call in supernatural abundance. I pray that every demonic scheme of the enemy that would bring you into poverty would be rebuked and that the blessing of the Lord will come greatly in your life. I declare that you will have bonuses. I declare that you will have raises on your job. I declare that you will have ideas and strategies that will bring you income. And as you put the Lord first in your money, your blessed money multiplies in the name of Jesus Christ. I would say to you that the devil may want you cursed, but God takes pleasure in the blessing of his people. If you receive that, I want you to give the Lord a shout. Now, I want you, this is our dismissal. I want you to bring those offerings to the Lord right now. Come on, everybody just walk. If you're just going to pass your hand over or your phone over, let's do it now. Glory to God. Don't let's do ours.